Hey folks, and we're live. Uh, my name is Nick Taylor. I'm a senior software engineer at Forum. Forum is a software that powers dev. And as always, I'm here with my awesome co-host, Christina Gordon. Uh, you want to just uh, say a little bit about yourself, Christina, before we get to our guest? Sure. I'm Christina Gordon. I am the open source community manager at Forum. And that's all you really need to know about me. Let's Let's talk about Sean. Yeah, cool, cool. So today we have uh, Sean Wang, aka Swix, with us. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Svelte, his book, and who knows what else. So, uh, Sean, thanks so much for coming on the stream. And uh, if you just want to say a few words about yourself, uh, so I'm assuming most people know who you are, but you know, you never know. So my, it doesn't hurt to say who you are. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You never know. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Sean. I um... I'm based in Singapore right now, so it's actually 2 a.m. my time, but I'm I'm working US hours. <laughs> um, I'm currently currently um, I'm currently a senior developer advocate at AWS. I previously was at Netlify, uh, where I may have interacted with some of you on your sites. Um, I'm pretty passionate about uh, developer experience and developer communities. I used to help run the uh, React subreddit where uh, we had something over 200,000 uh, React developers. Uh, and I recently uh, helped to start the Svelte Society, where we're, I think, up to like 5,000 developers now. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think, I think uh, a big part of developer experience comes from having the tooling and the community around the actual language framework or whatever. And uh, yeah, happy to be on. Cool, cool. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize you weren't uh, managing the React subreddit anymore because I know you were pretty active with that. Uh, but uh, I guess you're uh, helping out, helping out this felt train now. So. Uh... Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, I just like it. Just kind of got a little bit old for me. Uh, I was doing it for two years. I, actually, I, I I did a blog post about this. I was gonna say um, you did a post about this, didn't you? I'll try to find it real quick. Right. <laughs> uh, cool. Thanks, yeah, thanks, Christina. Um, and yeah, so so. I think I think it's a two two factor thing. So I my interest moved. Um, like I I've done what I wanted to do, and then I think also it's healthy for a community to have renewal. Um, you shouldn't have the same people uh, kind of running things all the time. Yeah. Um, you know sometimes it's good, but but also uh, you, people have term limits for a reason. And I think <laughs> yeah. it'd be it'd be an interesting idea to have term limits for uh, open source communities and. Uh, yeah. So essentially, that's what I did. Um, I think just by inject, but just by replacing yourself, you inject new life into the community. So um, yeah. it was kind of like a, a thing that I wanted to do. And then also, uh, the mod board was all guys um, uh, from yeah. like a very certain demographic. So I, I I wanted to also make sure that in replacing myself, I replaced it with uh, more diversity. Cool. Cool. Nice. Yeah. No. That's no cool. I loved. I, mean, you... I loved that. Yeah. That's... Go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. Oh, no, I was just going to say you, you've created so many things. Like, I, I know you're big into open source as well. We we are as well, obviously, because our, our software is open source. <laughs> but, like, I know you've created, like, you have maintainers on it now. But, like, I know you did, like, the Create React cheat sheet. Uh, there's the one with TypeScript as well. Like, there's a just a bunch of projects you started. And, I mean, I, I, I don't know if you still contribute to them. But I know you definitely have a few other people working on those. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, uh, like realistically, I haven't had that much success like handing it off to other people. Um, I, I definitely still maintain the the React TypeScript cheat sheets. I think, okay. I mean, I think that's that's okay. Um, it, people people find me through there, and it's it's a it's a nice thing to have. Like I, I you know, according to GitHub statistics, I teach a thousand people a day React and TypeScript. Wow, a thousand people awesome. a day. It, it's got like it's got something ridiculous like. 20,000 stars or something. I actually, I, I don't really know that. Don't quote me on that. But <laughs> um, uh, yeah, 19.4. 19, OK, we're, we're almost at 20K. But anyway, we'll, it's, say, it's we'll say 20. We'll say 20. <laughs> I know. Uh, no, that's cool. It's, it's, that, uh, it's, that, it's that joke about how, like, how like, guys will be like 5 foot 10 and they'll tell you they're 6 feet. Um, <laughs> like, adapted for the. Adapter for the coronavirus, like guys will stand five five foot ten away from you and tell you they're at six feet. <laughs> I don't have that um, problem. I'm five foot seven, so <laughs> same. Okay, we're the same height. Yeah, um, there we go. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, no, uh, you know, I think, I think, I think it's it's nice, you know, to 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 do some open source, but it should always come from a place of like this benefits me, and and then it's like a nice to have if you if you come along, because because I feel like some people try to give back too yeah. early, and then they they see no impact, and they're like, this sucks, like I'm a failure <laughs> at this, and and you know, no surprise, like you know, y- y- it's not very authentic if you try to do something just to get clout. Um, yeah, and uh, I think pe- I-, I wish more people understood that. Yeah, no, it definitely makes sense. And and in regards to the React TypeScript cheat sheet, whenever uh, I mean I've been doing TypeScript for quite a while and React, but I'm not really I'm not doing it professionally at the moment. But whenever anybody anybody asks me about those two things, I just the first thing I do is I just send a link to your cheat sheet because it's just got you know there's no point on me just pairing with them and going through all these things because it's all in your cheat sheet, you know, and if there's something else they have questions about then after for sure. But, uh, you know, it's just a great resource. And, uh, and, yeah, and I you. know, I, I know like what you're saying about like, you know, trying to get the clout, you know, that's, it's definitely not the way to go. And I know, uh, Ken C. Dodds is obviously quite, quite big into open source. And I know a lot of the stuff he did originally was to, you know, fill needs that he had and then they obviously got popular these projects but like like they were really i think initially for his own purposes like his scripts uh you know yeah. react testing library uh, which has spawned into several testing libraries now there's i mean started off with the dom testing library but uh you know we use preact actually i think library. it started i think it started off with react testing library then it extracted into dom testing uh, library okay, okay. Yeah. yeah that would make That's sense because he was probably focusing on react first so yeah cool yeah um well, yeah i mean you know i think ken definitely knows there's always an there's always a uh, origin of like it solves my problems but then when it yeah. converts to a larger open source project like uh downshift or testing library then it becomes a a, a long slog of just uh marketing maintenance uh community management that kind of thing so yeah. uh, he definitely puts in a, the effort there and it shows yeah, yeah. Although Kent is awesome, we are here to talk with you today. <laughs> so um, uh, shout out to Kent, though. He's doing a lot of awesome stuff. Um, I guess uh, we'll start with, you were mentioning you're maintaining the Svelte Society now. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk a bit about that, but we're definitely going to talk about Svelte, the project as well. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to assume that not everybody in the in the stream might know what Svelte is, so we might we might have to kind of just give the, the TLDR before we dig into it a bit. Um, I don't know if uh, if you want to give that TLDR of of what it is, I guess, because it's it's another JS framework, and you know that's where the jokes always start. The ones ones popping out every day or whatever. So, uh, so it's not true that one pops out every day. Um, <laughs> and it's kind of a kind of an unhealthy joke, uh, especially to to for for Hacker News in particular, because yeah. like it's just not fair to front end front end developers. Uh, React has been on top of Hacker News trends for like. 38 straight months or something like that. Um, yeah. So so it's not one not one every day, but I do think that uh, Svelte is covering all the space that was previously not occupied by other frameworks. So in okay. that sense, uh, it is it is new and it is it is uh, coming out very quickly in adoption. And uh, so so the the long story short of what Svelte provides versus React, Vue, or Angular is that it is a, it is a framework built from the ground up to be a compiler first. Um, okay. Since we're since we're since we're a live Streaming. Uh, why don't I share my screen and I can just talk through the the, the couple talking points that I always talk about. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. So Sounds I'm gonna, great. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, cool. Can you see right. my screen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Frameworks are the new compilers. So this actually comes from uh, Tom Dale from the Ember team. So in 2017, he actually uh, talked about this. Compilers are. The, can you hear me? I, I see. I hear a lot of like on and off. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, it's all good. He, he yeah. talks in in twenty seventeen. He talks about this 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 idea that compilers are the new frameworks, and he, he's he's from the Ember team, which is pretty funny because Ember hasn't executed on this fully yet. They have like this <laughs> Glimmer VM thing, but um, anyway, so it's this idea that uh, web frameworks are transforming from runtime libraries into optimizing compilers, uh, and that's is essentially what Svelte is. Uh, kind of, I, I I'm not sure if Rich Harris kind of read this blog post or not. <laughs> but they eventually all concluded the same thing that uh, it's this idea that uh, we are shipping. You know, when when you use React, you ship something like a hundred kilobytes of JavaScript uh, as a baseline for every app that you use, and 
uh, you may not use all of React's features. You probably do not use all of React's features because you're not Facebook. So yeah. then the question is, why are you shipping you know, that much that you never use? Uh, obviously, you know this because you use Preact. So Preact is only three kilobytes and has the majority of React's features. So by default, already, more, most people should use React's, uh, should use Preact uh, if they use React at all. Uh, but the problem with Preact and the problem with React is also that they don't give you enough out of the box, right? It is such a minimal surface area by design. That's what Sebastian Markvoga is very keen on. Um, so it doesn't have styling. And uh, you know what? I have gone through every iteration of CSS and JS and CSS modules and BEM and all that bullshit. I'm not, sorry, I, I, hope that, I try not to swear on this. Okay. Uh, it's, it's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, right, yeah, you know, uh, you're, uh, ben, 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 ben famously swears a lot, so <laughs> I think I'm in the clear. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're fine. Uh, it's all good. <laughs> I'll, I'll just lie to you and tell you it's censored and it, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like, you know, in Angular and Vue and Svelte, uh, styling is just not an issue. It's just magically not an issue. Why? Because it's, there's consensus from the maintainers about how you, how you, do, how you do styles. Uh, okay. And it, it seems like a, a web framework, you know, would be, it would be nice to have, to have styling. But then also Svelte has, you know, animations, uh, head management, class management, um, actions, you know, state management, that kind of thing. Um, all, all that, all that kind of just built in. So I, I, I have, I have a few blog posts on this. Uh, Christina, this is where you get busy. Um, why I enjoy <laughs> Svelte. So this is, uh, I love using Google as my own personal search index. By the way, it's very, it's very good. I do this. Um, <laughs> so, so this is, this, these are the reasons. Like, it's batteries included, uh, okay. mutability. Like, I, I write about twenty percent less code with Svelte, uh, and that's really good. Uh, oh yeah, here's the here's the here's the list of like things that are first party in Svelte, which are on the left hand side, and things are that are third party in React on the right hand side. Like, you'd have to stop what you're doing and go evaluate all these tools, and then decide what you want to do, and then in install it, and then that's extra JavaScript wait, and so on and so forth. Um, okay. Sorry, actually, so so the the main core idea of why this actually is even even reasonable at all is because Svelte's a compiler; it only includes the things that you use. Um, so, so it just has this hard dependency on let's have a build step, um, yeah. and then what can what's 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 the max that we can do with that build step? So, uh, and and the build step is is the optimizing compilers. Um, so, you know, to be fair to the other frameworks, Vue three is is slightly uh, adopting this. They have uh, op they have sort of optimizing code paths around uh, static te static templates as well as. Um, they, they've restructured themselves to be more ES module friendly. Uh, okay. React has no intention of doing that at all. They've gone on the record saying that. Uh, and Angular has this Angular IV project, which has been in the works for two years. So uh, who knows when that will be out. Um, so so yeah, um, Svelte is just built from the ground up to do that. And uh, it's, it's just a much lighter framework. It's, it's very enjoyable. Uh, and I can, I can show you the, the REPL. But one more thing I wanted to send people to is this idea that Svelte is a space elevator. Um, so I gave a talk on this um, okay. here, and so Christina, you can uh, find this one here if you mm -hmm. uh, can send this, send them there. Uh, and let me just, let me just. So this is React, okay? Yeah. Uh, this is this is the this is the this is React as a rocket. The 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 more uh, the the fundamental thing about shipping a runtime. I'm just kind of scrubbing through my own my own talk right now. Sorry, this is very indulgent, but like also <laughs> I've made this points before. Um, so I'm trying. I'm trying to, because I'm definitely there's a slide that like really makes this super clear. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. okay, this one. Um, so the rocket equation says that a ship JavaScript. Uh, so you know when we when we when we sh when we send a rocket up into space, we, the more we the more payload we want to send, you know the yeah. more the app we want to send, the more the more uh, the more fuel we need to we need to include. But the more fuel we need to include, we need to include more fuel to to ship that fuel. Uh, yeah, so it's yeah. like just this recursive uh, thing that just keeps adding it, adding it up, uh, and that and that, that's a fundamental uh, sort of drawback of this of this approach. And so the yeah. the 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 space elevator approach is let's just let's just install this um, elevator like a like a long wire, um, and just have people traverse up and down the wire, and it'd be much cheaper to to for each traversal. Um, and and the the analogy is that. Um, this this space elevator is the compiler, and then every okay. time we make an app with Svelte, we are making use of the compiler 
um, to go up and down uh, and, and ship our stuff into space or ship our stuff to, to, the, to the end user. So that's the idea. Like uh, Instead of shipping the entire app payload together with the framework footprint all at once, uh, why not just invest in the compiler and then ship that? Uh, so the drawbacks of the compiler is that it, it, it does take a lot of effort to, uh, to make. So uh, the React core team is you know, famously just seven people. And then on a per app basis, there's a lot of you know, third party React ecosystem developers and, uh, yeah. and each individual React expert within a company needs to be a, you know, a master of like, all these tools. Whereas <laughs> yeah. uh, a compiler framework would probably have a much larger core team that, that is responsible for building all the, and deciding for you and, and building all, all, the, all the features first party. Um, okay. But then it enables much smaller app teams to be, to be able to ship more without uh, okay. having to maintain much more systems. So, so more upfront costs for, for more uh, sort of, uh, flexibility long-term. I, I think that's, that's kind of like the sales pitch. <laughs> okay. And nice. so, like, uh, so in terms of, like, I, I get, I get that you compile away what you don't need. So does that also mean like, like, uh, like maybe you'll touch on this later, but uh, for example, like when you render in React and say you have a, a value in an input and like, that's the only thing that changes. It's good. It's going to be, it's going to be a, an imperative DOM operation that happens after the virtual DOM decides like it laser focuses yep. on what needs to change only. And like that, that's the yep. expense there. Like uh, I'll, I'll post the link to Rich uh, Harris's reactivity talk, but, but mm -hmm. is in, in the case of Svelte, does that mean that they know where all the code paths are that are actually going to change something? So like, you know, like if, yeah. okay. So, so they compile it down to say like, here's all the static stuff or this stuff. Well, not s static necessarily, but like, Here's I'm gonna render my form, but the only thing I'm adding is an event handler to the on change of or or the on input change of the uh, that particular yeah. element. Okay. Yeah, and I can I can show you that. Uh, so uh, here is one more for Christina. I'll compile stuff in your head. <laughs> so this is a blog post series by a friend of mine. Um, I it's actually a, a talk that I gave, and then he was like, uh, "All right, you did you didn't do it." You didn't do it justice. So here, here's uh, <laughs> so so he shouted me out, and he's like, "You didn't do it justice." So here's here's like a four part log series about this. So this is where uh, this is what I'm about to take you through. Uh, but okay. if you want the, the definitive blog post about this, uh, check out this blog series, um, and that's the link that uh, I would recommend uh, people checking out. But I want to take you through the int intuition of it. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's do this. We actually have code, which is nice. I, lo I love live streams of code. Yeah, we're, we're, we're right, fans so of live coding, so. <laughs> totally, totally. Uh, so let's do a quick one on end value. Uh, actually, let's just call this value. I'm just going to show off some of the spell features. It's not really super fair, but okay. Um, value equals to value. Okay, so if I type this, it's gonna it's gonna update, right? Yeah. Um, and this is all processed through JavaScript. If I wanted to, I could just say something like. Uh, reverse equals to value dot reverse, and then I'll just have that reverse function. Is is that how you reverse a string? How do you reverse a string in in JavaScript? Um, yeah, there's 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 tons. Of, I think you can do a you can just convert it to an array reverse. and then you dot reverse okay. and then you join no, it. No, no, really? There's, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that's that's gross. That's it. We we all <laughs> just failed an interview. There, there we go. <laughs> I just loved um, it for you to answer, Nick. I said, "Go ahead, Nick. You answer that one." <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. one of those horrible right. questions they ask in an interview. Anyways, yes, I they mean, do. I always thought that strings were like long strings for arrays, anyway, or like an array type. Um, anyway, anyway, so so yeah, so we have like Nick or right, Nick, you know, and I and I show the reverse here. So yeah, I, I'm I'm demonstrating that I'm not just reflecting the value; I'm passing it through some JavaScript. And it, this is very, very light, right? Like it, this will be more lines of code in, in React already. Um, yeah. So, but I wanted to demonstrate that what what goes on under the hood because this this is this is really essential to understanding that uh, Svelte essentially writes the code that you would have written anyway in vanilla JS. Okay. Okay. So here here we're gonna take a look at. Okay, I zoomed in too much. I try to try to zoom in because you know I yeah. I'm, I'm a. Um, oh yeah, no, for sure for the for tech speaker. The so I, I know I know how this works. Yeah, exactly. Um, so so let's let's actually see how this how this transposes. So this is this is the 
source, okay? Mm -hmm. Then this is the JavaScript output, and then this okay. is the, the rendered result when you run the JavaScript. Okay, so let's look at the JavaScript output. Let's ignore the imports, uh, and then kind of go to go to here. So this is the the source of it, because at the bottom there's there's kind of uh, some 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 boilerplate overhead, um, but we're we're actually gonna we're actually gonna rely on this this thing, the create fragments. Um, okay. Let me let me actually let me actually simplify this a little bit, because I feel like um, I'm gonna be complicate this a little bit too much. Uh, yeah. So this is the bare minimum. Okay. So. So this is the this is the core of the 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 the, the function, right? Like I've I've declared a bunch of states. Uh, in in and then I have the C lifecycle, the M lifecycle, and then the okay. P lifecycle. Those are the main ones. There's also D for for this for uh, deconstruct, but okay, you know, I'm not going to do that. But C is create, right? Okay. Uh, and uh, M is modify or uh, sorry m is m is mount like when you when you sort of mount the the, the so you're, you're creating the element the dom elements and then you mount it on, on on the dom like you know uh uh dot you know element dot append child that's that's yeah. mount. Mm -hmm. and, then, yeah. and then p is update uh, because you was you was already taken by something else so p <laughs> <laughs> okay and then uh and then i just want to direct your attention to to p so p is update right and then it says if dirty uh, and input the value uh, is is different from what we what we had before. Then we are going to set input value. So okay. um, so that's 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 the setter that directly sets uh, this uh, this value here. Um, and it doesn't do any other diffing. It doesn't do any other re-rendering. Uh, okay. So that's kind of the, the 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 magic that we're talking about here. There's no DOM diffing. It, you're literally directly updating that value. Um, okay. So let me. Uh, let me demonstrate by showing you the source code. Okay, so let us say so this set input value function and and so we're gonna have two 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 functions, right? This bind value uh, translates to set input value here, and then this okay. this value here because value here is we're just displaying that value. We're not we're not uh, you know, uh, we're just displaying that value. So then we, we're yeah. gonna have to set data function. So let's just track this set input value and set data value. Uh, a function. Okay. So these two things are coming from Svelte slash internal set data okay. and set input value. So I'm going to show you exactly where in the source code that comes from. Um, and you cannot do this with React, right? You cannot just go in the React source code and go like, I have no idea where the hell this is, <laughs> this is going. Um, so so this is runtime. Uh, this is internal. And then uh, honestly, I should probably do a search for this because I actually don't really know where this is. I'm gonna guess that it's index. Nope, oh, that was a wrong guess. Uh, Dom. That's a barrel file. Oh, that's cool to uh, see. It's written in TypeScript, doesn't it? It is in TypeScript. Yes. Um, so this is the entirety of the set data function. Okay. So you could pretty do. big. <laughs> let's let's look at set input value. Oh yeah, it's right there. Okay, cool. That's oh, yeah. that's that's all the code that runs. Um, so there's no virtual DOM. It directly modifies the DOM. Actually, um, I forgot to make one intermediate point. Right? So let's do this uh, about blank. Okay. So I'm going to write, uh, this is a blank HTML document, right? Um, yeah. So it just has, just has HTML. So I'm going to write from scratch. Uh, uh, <laughs> I forgot. I forgot the. Okay, how do we? How do? How do I create? How do I create an element? Okay, let's let's look at elements. Oh, uh, do, um, uh, document dot create element. Yep. Right. Okay. It's it, yeah. All right. That was dumb of me. Document oh, no, dot no, no, no. create. It's elements. one of those attributes in JavaScript, or not attributes, but thing in JavaScript that actually does what it says. So it's like you dot create. I know. It's like, it's like yes. <laughs> uh, I I think I feel like if I if I do this. Um, yeah. This 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 is a bit so this is completely unrehearsed because I I wasn't planning to do this but I know no, don't worry it's it's, so it's, go it's, for it. it's more fun freestyle honestly I know right does that does that work okay. body's not the uh, oh you have to do document dot body ooh look at okay. that okay me, All right. we're in the matrix the we're in the matrix okay so let let me let me try and apply this code uh so it's input dot value uh equals value All right, fine so so that means if I wanted to change I want to update this to Nick, Christina, because yeah. I have to feel like I haven't shouted out Christina. <laughs> uh, and I just ran this code, it would change that value. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, it's yeah. this is the exact same code as I'm writing here. It's just that Svelte is compiling it for me from a more convenient syntax. 
Like, yeah. th- I, I'm writing vanilla JavaScript with Svelte. Yeah. They're, they're embracing the imperative. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That, like, like let's, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's var uh, div equals document. Var, var div equals document dot create element div. Um, whatever. Uh, yeah, how do I set like a text? How do I set text for uh, for uh, dot inner that? text? Ooh, nice. You see, like my my vanilla JS is definitely not that great. <laughs> That's <It's> too rough. <laughs> uh, and then document dot body dot append child div. That's two rocks. Okay. So again, if I'm setting text, it just goes, you know, what does this say? It just says uh, text.data equals data. Fine. So okay. div.data, because it, apparently, like, you know, I, I, I would I would have liked to say dot value, but apparently that's not the DOM API, right? So I have to remember that it's dot data. Um, and then I'll say like new value, right? And then let's let's watch this change. That did not change. <laughs> no, it's uh, the, the 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 data property that's for all the data attributes on uh, DOM element. So I'm not sure what they're doing there. It's because uh, they have a whole text property. I I think those yeah. that might be something coming from Svelte. Like I don't here, think so. That, that was a new change. Yeah, that, that was a new change. Um, hmm, yeah, I'm you, you would have to do div dot inner text, but okay. Um, yeah, then I, I don't know what this does then. I, 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 I guess it's something else. Sorry, go ahead. It, no, no, I was going to say maybe they just have like a very thin wrapper on top of some of the DOM stuff to handle perhaps a couple cases. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, it's the first time I'm seeing this felt code. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, look, um, so, it's, so, it's in, so it's inside a string. You okay. see that? Uh, so Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, so what you I, see there, that's a text node. Exactly, exactly. That that's what I'm that's what I'm missing over here. Um, okay, okay, yeah. So do... <laughs> you could do anyway, whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I I think do it's I, do, I, do I create a text node? Yeah, you have to create an element and I think it's of type text node, but that I've never done actually. But uh Hey. Oh, there we you? go. Hello. Cool. Woohoo. Yeah, and then you could append that into the div. I thought I did. Did did I not do that? Oh no, it's oh it's right, oh it's... you created a new div which is the text node, so you overwrote your old reference to the other div you have. Oh, there we go. Uh, div dot okay, so div dot data equals to new value, right? Uh, you... No, you'll have go to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Oh yeah, yeah, because so, you're in the so, text node now. Yeah, yeah, okay, gotcha. Right. So, so if we're if, all learning like my, today, it's all good. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's great. No, I mean, uh, Nick, Nick is uh, Nick is doing extremely well with this impromptu vanilla JavaScript test. But, but like my point is, right, that if you were to write vanilla JavaScript, you wouldn't write all this. You would. Yeah. Like there, there's, there's, if there were no framework, you you would have to write all this, bundle it up into a function, all that. Uh, it'd be hard to maintain. So what a compiler gets you is that you write a custom language, right? That that's this, and then it outputs to something nice. Uh, so yeah. outputs outputs to the the raw JavaScript and handles things like unmounting for you, right? Like don't forget, you know, the to unmount, otherwise you you have a memory leak, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So so it does it does all these things sort of, you know, for you, and then and then you can also you know server side render this stuff because uh, surprisingly this is valid HTML, right? Uh, so uh, so is a superset of HTML, so you can actually just string concatenate all these things. That's why uh, server side rendering with Svelte is very fast as well. Ah, okay, okay. Um, so, so that's so that's really nice. Uh, and then it's got other nice features. Like the other thing that WoW is devo- WoW is, uh, you know, React developers, I just put this in a div, um, is styling, right? Like, how, how about how about let's actually have a framework that offers styling. Um, okay. So. Uh, you can say color equals click. Um and like that sh- that just makes sense that this would work. Uh, and yep. this does work in Vue, except Vue mm-hmm. uh, doesn't do scope styles by default. Uh, it does global by default, and you, you need to add a tag. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I didn't know that. But so wait, yeah, so for um, Svelte, it is 
it is scoped by scoped. default then? Yeah. Okay. And so you they, wouldn't have to do they, the scoped in the side the style tag like you do in view. <laughs> in yeah, in view, I mean that's just that's just a legacy decision. They can't really reverse, otherwise it's gonna break compatibility. So it's mm -hmm. more for them to, to break the compatibility. It's unfortunate. Okay. Like most people I think want want scopes, you know. Um uh whereas as well as the other way around, it doesn't matter, it's not important. But the, the the point is that this is better than React. And for me, it was more useful than React because this these are the things that I actually use. I don't actually yeah. use, you know, a, a bunch of the other, you know, super advanced features of React that uh, you know a few people care about at Facebook. Um, yeah. And so, so I th so I think my conclusion, you know, recently has been that uh, Svelte for sites of React React, right? So that's uh, that's kind of like the, the hot take that that people were, were kind of excited about, um, yeah. because React does have other benefits to it. It's got a much larger ecosystem, and it has React Native. So if yeah. I were to write one app that I wanted to run on multiple platforms, uh, no way I'd use Svelte. I definitely use React. Um, yeah. But if I was making websites, then I want to use that tool that gives me all the things out of, out of the box that I want. And that's not React, and that's not Preact. So yeah, yeah that's, that's, my, that's, my, that's my pitch. Yeah, and I, I I like that everything's co-located in the file because I I haven't done any view, but I know view has a similar setup. So you have like a script section. Yeah. Uh, so, but I, I I like this kind of nice, and it this is kind of goes against the argument from years ago. You know when they're always saying like your JS has to be in a separate file, your markup here, and it, but the the reality is you're binding JavaScript to like HTML stuff, and so like. It's I don't know, it's just kind of nice because it's all right in your face and and it's all scoped within that particular component that you're building here, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, you can you can you know break out the scope if you want, uh, but it's okay. just it's just really nice to see to see that uh, this is it's just kind of built in. Um, yeah. Let me let me show you let me let me show you a couple other examples which are just kind of mind blowing. Uh, let's can let's I look ask at one animations. question real quick before we do that, just because it has to do with what sure. you're. You're doing there, and then we can do animations because I love animations. Um, <laughs> um, so the other thing I noticed, and maybe this is just kind of one of those dumb questions, but because you said it was a superset of HTML, then you don't need something like a template tag, like you would have, say, in like Vue, right? You can just have yeah. uh, the HTML in there, uh, kind of how you had it before, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I feel like so you know, I'm sure Vue fans are going to. Uh, disagree strongly with me on this, but view three, especially with a lot of the new features that Evan is in, uh, is introducing, is actually becoming more felt like. And okay. so, uh, I mean, I I, I just it, honestly, it's just like an API preference choice. I look at view, and there's a lot of indirection. And look at felt, there's less indirection, so I pick felt. Um, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't like a big thing. Like ultimately, the end user, that your your customer, your people person viewing your site. Does not care what framework you're oh, using. Yeah. Uh, they they care about 100%. the user experience. <laughs> yeah, I just I just want to submit much, my order. <laughs> exactly, they they care about how much JavaScript you're using in the, in the sense that it affects loading times, um, but they also care that you are able to ship features fast. And yeah. so I I think that from from that angle, using frameworks is important, uh, and then using a framework that helps you be more productive is important. And for me, so far, it's been Svelte for sites. Uh, so that that's that's where that's why I lay it down. And I feel like people aren't being critical enough about their framework choice that they that they lay out these decision points as 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 clearly as I have. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people. Like I was professionally tied up in React for a long, long time uh, before yeah, I before this, I came to something we'll, like this. We'll, we'll probably tie into this later when we talk about your book. But like, Svelte looks really cool, but. Don't don't go changing your entire app to Svelte right away. If if you've got something in production, there's business value and stuff to take into consideration. So, uh, you know, I mean, Certainly. it it, it yeah, definitely looks of, really cool though. Yeah, I mean, you know, it is used at scale by some companies, uh, including Apple and Spotify. But um, yeah, like I, I'm making the case for small experiments with Svelte, and if you like it, mm -hmm. take it further. But uh, you don't have to go all all, all the way. I never say never say do that. Um, yeah. I just, let me let me just show you one more thing because I, I also like this idea of incremental improvement and, and actually that actually that, funny enough that actually comes from Danny Romov. So uh, <laughs> let me show you this. So this is the tweened tutorial. Okay. So 
I'm all about animation, yeah, so, so let's do this. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Christina's exactly. going to put you in the hot seat now. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> These are different kinds of animations than I do, because this uses, like, uh, framers. No, not framer. What does Svelte use behind hood? Do you know? Or is it just, like... CSS? Yeah. Oh, it's just CSS. Okay, then we're good. I'm, I'm good here. Let's go. Well, um, well hang on, hang on. Um, it, uses, it uses CSS for transitions. Um, okay. But what, I, what I'm about to show you is JavaScript um, uh, tweening. So and, and you can okay. use that JavaScript tweening. You can use that JavaScript tweening to set, uh, you know, HTML or CSS values, and then and then that produces the animation effect. So it's kind of, it's kind of like where you know there are two ways to to achieve animation effects. One is pure CSS transitions, and then the other is uh, some interpolation of JavaScript. So we're going to do the interpolation interpolation part. You can talk about the the JavaScript later, but I just want to show you like so this is this is a this is a Svelte store. This is the inbuilt state management. Uh, Know, use of uh, so solution, uh, you can you can have others, uh, but this is this is like a, a, a like a pub sub type system, like a like a single like uh, basically it's it's recoil from from Facebook, but <laughs> you know it's kind of built into Svelte, um, and it, and it's mutable, so you can just edit uh, the progress button. So like I can say progress dot set zero, progress dot set twenty five percent, progress dot set fifty percent. So what that looks okay. like here is that I can I can click this button, uh, and it's zero twenty five fifty seventy five. This is a Typical HTML progress. Um, a, a lot of people actually don't know that this is a this is an HTML uh, feature. This is I think it's HTML five, but um, yeah, yeah, this is inbuilt into HTML. A progress bar. Uh, you don't you don't need a, a framework to, to have a progress bar. So this is great. Um, but like, what if you want this to be animated, right? Like this this jumping around isn't very nice. Um, and so so it's a one line. So it's a two line change, right? You import tweened from Svelte Motion, right? Uh, and then you change this to tweened. And now you have, uh, oops, whoa, did I did I mess it up? Oh no, it's, it's still bundling. So uh, okay, uh, because we're in the browser, it has to re-download the packages. Okay, so okay. so so because we just did those changes, um, I now have nicely animated progress bars, right? Nice. Uh, and this these are these are just interpolated values from JavaScript. Like I could just expose this at first. Okay. Um, oh. I don't actually know what the oh uh, yeah. so you can see you can see the the numbers just just tweeting between the the, the values that I set yeah right? I'm between. Yep. So, so that's yeah um so that's really cool um it's, it's this idea that first you prototype with something that's simple and then the the incremental upgrade isn't very much like I just change out I swap out something for the animation value of that. Yeah. I don't have to pause everything I'm doing, go pick a animation framework, come back, and then change about change drastically change around a bunch of things. Uh, like you know, the equivalent for, for this one would be React Spring or React Motion. Um, yeah. This is just kind of in there. Uh, yeah. If I, if I want uh, the Spring Spring I was animation say they have values, Spring, don't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If 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 we want Spring oh, animation nice. values, it's the same operation. Uh, I'm going to copy. So this is this is just following me around on my cursor. Uh, there's probably a lag for you if you're watching on the stream, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna swap this to a spring value. So again, copy, paste, paste, and then now it's springing around like that. Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat had a question: Is 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 that all CSS? Even the spring? No, no. These are all all JS. All JS. Yeah, I haven't yeah, shown I'm you any sure. CSS animations. Okay. okay. Um, yep. let, I mean, I can I can show you the chords here. Uh, the, the nice thing about these is, is it's like you're you're not writing a lot of code and it you know like even if you know you're not in you know well versed in animations you, you can get up and running pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just so elegant because all the all the complexity like it compiles to vanilla JavaScript so you don't have to worry about that. Like it's just yeah. the complexity like this is made for play. Like what if what if it was easy instead of hard? You know what I mean? Like then you yeah. would play more. Then you would be able to create more interesting experiences uh, because mm -hmm. it's because it's built in because it's easy. Um, yeah. And I just I I I I I don't know how to express this. I, I'm I'm definitely finding some frustration in like me not being able like I'm typically very able to express what I want to say, but this mm -hmm. idea that uh, I can just naturally upgrade from a static experience, which is kind of like the default one like that. Um, yeah. yeah. Like this one that we that we just talked about, no animation, and then just just a few lines of changes to make it animated. I like that a lot. Um, and mm -hmm. and it's the same thing. Like, um, 
with 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 React and like with with uh, binding inputs and stuff, um, I don't want to have to like use state and then have the thing in the thing and then uh, value and then all oh, that. I need an event handle. Like, I just don't want to bind the value. It's like why don't you just let me have two way binding? I know it's yeah. a I know it's a big deal in Angular, but if you have local scoped two way binding, it's not that big a deal because guess what? It compiles to the same thing under the hood. I just don't have yeah. to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, no, I, I definitely agree. Something like that. Okay, so I do I do a lot of animations, but something like that where you have like coordinates and things like that. It's very so these kinds of experiences that you can make a lot nicer for people just by having these subtle animations, like it makes a better user experience. It can be very hard for people to do and implement. And you have to learn a lot of stuff with like coordinates and things like that. Like you were just showing the coordinates. Well, in this case, you don't have to, right? Because you're just writing, you're just changing a few little <laughs> lines here. And then you already have that nice experience. So I agree with you. I think this kind of stuff is really great it helps other people who you know maybe don't want to specialize in animations but they want to give a good you know user experience yeah, yeah. it's it's a great thing to just kind of give people that ability to have that yeah and it, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, go ahead. no i was going to say it kind of ties into a bit of developer satisfaction you know when you're 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 learning or just trying to build stuff like getting this like instant gratification because like hey i just made a you know a progress bar and a few lines of code you know and it you know it's just kind of like yeah. It's it's kind of satisfying as a developer to, to that you crank something out pretty quickly and uh, yeah it is and yeah it is. I I think I think it's it's like making making it fun to make fun experiences you know um, yeah because like I, I definitely was not having fun doing any of this in React um, that's, that's yeah. all I know you know Vue does and have make, something similar with the animations it does. Uh, it's it does. Um, a little bit more complex, but it's it's similar. They they do similar stuff too, which is what something I liked about Vue versus like React too was that they had these like nice transitions and and things like that that you could just kind of add in. So I agree. I think it's a really nice yeah. user and developer experience. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd say I'd say Vue and Svelte have philosophically much more uh, much more in common than with React. Like the 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, here I'm going to actually show you the the CSS uh, animations. Okay. Um, I'm actually not very uh, <laughs> well versed in this, so so okay, okay. So this is without animation, uh, and what I'm doing here is I'm 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 showing a simple toggle uh, okay. between mm -hmm. uh, whether something is on or off, right? So here's a checkbox. I'm binding the checked value, whether it's visible or off. And if I if I click this off in the checkbox, then this is false. And then if this is false, this this p tag uh, shows up or doesn't show up, right? Okay. So yeah. here here it is. This is how this is that thing worked in in operation. Yep. Okay. So if I want to have this uh, animated, um, I will import fade from Svelte. And then I'll say, uh, this p tag, I want it to transition with the fade. Uh, so let's see this in operation. And that fades up, and that fades back here. Okay. Fades up, fades back here. OK, so what does that look like in CSS land? So uh, hey, Christina, you may have to help me here, because uh, this is like a little you bit You should be able to click on the. Yeah, I think you should be able to click on the P tag. I'm guessing it's putting it on, but click on the P yeah, tag yeah. to, yeah, and I'm, I'm then on. it should be able to go ahead and then click the check boxes. Let me see what happens when you click the check. Oh, you see that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Go back. I need. I need. I need to slow it down. Um. Yeah. There is a. I thought there was yes. on Chrome like a way to look at the animations itself. Hang on. Hang on. There, there's. There's. I, I don't. I don't need to do that. I can. I can just do this. Uh, yeah. So. Oh yeah, change the duration. Uh, yeah, yeah. See, I obviously don't use this enough because I, <laughs> I, sh I should not. I should not have to look that up, but whatever. Um, so I'm going to uh, slow down the, the duration artificially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's going to slow down. Okay. Cool. Um, so let's actually uh, look at it. Yeah, it's it's just running this the CSS animation. So there's no JavaScript involved. It's just pure CSS that's been compiled for us. Um, okay. Yeah. There it is. And, and, and that's kind of nice. They just have a little class that the they're box. adding on and off. Yeah. They yeah. just have a little class that they're adding on and off. Yep. Right. But yeah. like for us, we didn't have to do any of that because it's such a common thing that mm -hmm. I can just do import fade and then put the fade on the element that I want to fade. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. this kind of reminds me of like animations in jQuery and stuff where you could just say uh, fade in, fade oh, out. Oh, yeah. True. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. With with people. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say like all, all this stuff here that you're showing. I mean, it's felt in general. 
came out of a need that Rich Harris had. Rich Harris, who's the creator of Svelte, he works he's, he works at the New York Times and he was having performance issues with a lot of things, right? And that that's how Svelte came about? That's that's kind of um, what I've understood? Or is, sorry, am I missing like, up the story? Yeah. Hello? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can hear you. Hello, hello. Yeah. He, uh, yeah we I hear can't it. hear you all of a sudden. <laughs> um, okay. I think Whoa. maybe it's what just happened? going slow from him um, sharing. Oh, oh okay. device. Oh, hang on. I think I think my audio cut out. Ah. Okay. Yeah, because um, we hear you. Okay. We hear you. All right. All right. My um, yeah, my headphones are, are not very good. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would probably say that Rich Harris um has been. He just kind of flies his um, you know, I don't think he used other frameworks. Like he's just been making his own frameworks for a long time. Uh, so he okay. he was previously okay. in charge. He previously made a framework called Reactive, uh, and this was actually where the idea of the single file component was first originated. Um, so he was okay. using this uh, for his work, and then he realized that uh, he wanted to make a breaking change, but the Reactive community was already too strong, so he just broke off and made Svelte instead. Um, so okay. I, um, yeah, I don't think he ran into performance issues because he was always just in charge of his own framework. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so so you know, there, there's a lot more that I'm not showing you. Uh, you know, I think the the community is just way better than me at um, at, at just like you know coming up with examples. So uh, where I would say uh, for people to to get started is go through this tutorial. It takes about okay. uh, between one to two hours to just go through everything, and, and then you'll be you know a salt expert because this is literally all of it. Okay. Uh, then then you uh, then you head to the Twitter. So this is where this is the Svelte uh, Society Twitter that I uh, helped to run. Um, okay. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we, 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 we you know, highlight examples from the community. So, for example, let me show you. Uh, yeah, these are, these are the components that are made with Svelte that you can sort of build, built in. Um, let me show you some of the example REPLs that people are making. Uh, what is this? Uh, Svelte VR. OK, this may, this may kill my machine. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there's there's you know there's some projects that are like 3D uh, data viz people have definitely embraced Svelte in a big way. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what I like about this is like there's a very much of like a REPL culture in Svelte, where uh, we share things like these, and they're all self-contained pieces of code that I can just copy and paste, and it's usable, you know, in my app. Um, no, it's very it's cool. very much like the, cool. these are persisted like a gist is, so we can fork it, we can share it, um, and you know have a bunch of gists that I. That I have as well. Um, yeah, um, I mean it's just it's just a really great uh, community and 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 you know uh, framework that that enables that community. So so I, I really I really enjoy that. Um, we recently had a uh, conference, so uh, youtubecom slash Svelte Society. Uh, okay. So we recently had a conference with a whole bunch of talks with more uh, you know focused. Uh, ideas. So definitely check out Rich Harris's talk on this. So that was Rich Harris uh, kind of talking about the future as well. But then there's a lot of other speakers uh, on, on individual topics, which uh, which you can sort of dive into. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing my bit to to build that community. Yeah, no, it's the, all this looks really, really cool and amazing. And, and I like, I like the fact that there wasn't a lot of ramp up for you to show us the demos. Yeah, there's no code sandbox or anything. It's just yeah, it's very very lightweight, and I think I think it's it's a very healthy thing to do. So you know, uh, we're in Discord right now. Let's head over to the Svelte Discord. Um, there's a lot of showcases going on where people are showing their work, and okay. uh, it's a very lively community. With uh, yeah, I mean it's you know I, I I don't have any issues like clicking on any of these because I know that it's going to be pretty light because <laughs> felt <laughs> like it, Svelte is most people's second framework. So people who arrive Svelte, um, definitely have this idea that uh, of of performance orient orientation. Like they they don't they they, they definitely um, are very conscious about how they pick their dependencies and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Nick, can I say one thing real quick? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you all are hearing it, but I'm getting a really bad echo from you and me for some reason, but not from Sean. Yeah, it, it, think, it could be maybe the speaker change. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I think it's I think it's because of me. Um, let's let's blame the guest. Let's blame the guest. <laughs> I know. We always do. No, we always do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 
But yeah, okay. I mean, uh, I, I can I can take more questions. I, I mean, I, I'm kind of done with my spelt rant. Uh, but yeah, just people should yeah. try it out. That's all, that's all I say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if anybody in the yeah, chat has questions. Chat has questions. Uh, but if not, definitely. Uh, def if you don't have now, uh, have now we can uh, ask them later. Ask them later. Uh, here, we'll wait for the wait input. For the... Yep. Okay. Right, I switched over. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, yeah, if, if folks have questions in the chat, uh, uh, pop them in there now about Svelte. But if not, uh, we'll drop uh, Sean's links later again at the end of the stream. But I'm sure if you give a follow on Svelte Society or, or just if you aren't already following Swix, uh, you can probably ping them there or on Dev. Or w what's the best place you usually like for people to, you know, if they have a question? Like, I know you're pretty active on Twitter, so... Yeah, Twitter, Twitter, and uh, Discord. You know, I, I run a community now for my book, so um, I'm always on there, just checking on checking on what people are talking about. So cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I don't see any questions about Svelte right now, but uh, we can we can move along and we can uh, talk about your book if you'd like. Uh, I really enjoy sure. talking about Svelte, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go try it out now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I, I've I just done converted Angular, the whole I've done Dev Vue, I've done React. I'm just, you know, I gotta try it now. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like so, that it's so easy to start. So it's not a huge thing for me. Like, you know, if you have a couple hours, just yeah. gonna blow through it. Yeah, and I, and I think the whole, like you were saying, the culture of REPLs, like, like the whole, like there's REPL IT, Svelts is a built-in REPL on their site. I can see, but like Code Sandbox, all, all these like it's a whole other topic but like just there's so many amazing tools out there to just learn things or just get started that uh you know it's i don't know i i know people complain about tools sometimes but i think it's pretty amazing a lot of the tools we have right now definitely they'll get yeah. better i'm sure but it's like a i feel like it's a great time to be alive as a dev so <laughs> um, we did, yeah we did I mean, get you know, one question by the okay. way oh cool cool yeah sure okay so eric right Code said, would the size of an enterprise app be bigger with Svelte in comparison to other frameworks? Uh, uh, short answer is no. Uh, <laughs> so, da, 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 da. so we've actually done the um, research. Okay. So this is this is React versus Svelte, uh, and it's this idea that uh, a compiler has some overhead. So you saw, mm -hmm. you saw that um, because React is a runtime. Let me just show you that overhead again. You can still hear me, right? Yeah. I always have to check. OK. So because React as well has a runtime, um, this is this is basically repeated for every component. Uh, and that kind of adds up a little bit. And yeah. so the question was, if React using its runtime has smaller components, then that means that there's some crossover point at which you write enough components, uh, React's you know, payload actually starts uh, starts saving you JavaScript instead of uh, adding useless weight. And so the the so when I this was actually like for a couple of years this was like always like okay you know we'll, we'll solve that when, when we get there. Um, but then actually someone did the research, and so the uh, the conclusion is that um, yes, but uh, only if you get until 120 kilobytes in component source size. Um, that's where the the Svelte size starts to be above React. Okay. okay. Uh, so so then then yeah okay so th that's that's actually one of the things that uh, is my is in part of my sort of React uh, React for apps felt for sites thesis like if you're aiming for something in this range right less than fifty kilobytes or whatever definitely use felt right like th th no question um, and, and so so then then the, the but the the reason why even this is a yes uh, is that Svelte apps never get there uh, because we actually went and profiled real Svelte uh, examples, and okay. because of code splitting, all the examples come in after under 40 kilobytes. So you never, you, we we come in here. All the examples come in here. You never get to a point where you're this where you're, where you're even here. Like this is a very theoretical example where you jam all your components, like a, a, a insane amount of components, um, yeah. without code splitting, right? Like this is the moment you turn on code splitting, you're back down again because it, there's no footprint, right? Yeah. So whereas obviously React starts you off at at, at a at a fairly high uh, uh, wait. So, so yeah. I mean, that's the that's the long and short of it. Like, um, there is a crossover point, but you never reach it. Yeah. No. And that's a reminder if you're not code splitting, <laughs> code split. <laughs> For sure. 
Uh, and and you know that's another thing in favor of Svelte, uh, because Svelte is authored uh, as an ES module friendly uh, package. So let's go to Skypack. Um, okay, Skypack's Skypack is what Snowpack was, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. they, they're actually starting to evaluate um, you know ES module friendliness for uh, eventual tree shaking dead code elimination and also just uh, being able to import from from a CDN like like Skypack. So there is some level of self interest in this. Uh, Preacts. Uh, does a really good job because they have an export map. Svelte does not have an export map, uh, but the one that uh, has the weakest uh, compatibility is is React. Uh, it's one of those things where, like, if you don't prioritize it, then uh, it's not going to be code split, but it's fine. I mean, it, it's not it's not going to be very tree shaking friendly, but it's fine because React is optimizing for other things, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, just be aware of all these things when you choose your framework, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And. And and Skypack, uh, which used to be Snowpack, is a pretty interesting project. We we won't get into it now because uh, I, I would like to talk about your book, but it's <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Maybe we'll have you on another time talking about Snowpack. But uh, you uh, should have Fred. He's he's uh, I mean he, he he's a champion for going through all this. Like when I first I first talked to him like uh, one and a half years ago, and then he like demoed this like REPL thing, which is kind of weird. I don't think he continued on it. Uh, but okay. like now, I think he's on very solid footing with this ES module uh, first idea. So um, he he's a champ for for powering through and finding you know some product market fit here. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, cool. I'm just gonna drop uh, Fred's uh, Twitter and I put a link to the Sky Pack there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so let's talk a bit about your book here. Um, so your book, it's the Coding Career Handbook. This is something that you wrote in a, i think a few months uh i'll, I'll let yeah. you tell the story because it's you uh, definitely explain it better <laughs> i mean I, um it's always it's always interesting to hear other people explain it uh but yeah essentially i had a couple months between netlify and, and aws uh that i was going to start and so you know, I, I definitely took like the first couple of weeks to just play games and laze around mm -hmm. but then i was like you know i, I want to do something yeah. something real and uh so i decided to write a book and one of the things that i noticed in just the, the pantheon of like developer career books is that there's a lot of like how to break into tech how to crack the coding interview how to get that first mm -hmm. job how to like have the best resume right yeah and then there's nothing until uh clean code um you know like <laughs> like super senior stuff like how to architect your entire app like there's nothing in between there's no junior to senior thing like it, it's just all for yeah. all for senior stuff all for seniors yeah and uh you know i recently made that transition from junior to senior myself so i thought that this is a, a gap in the market right like for uh for targeted career advice from someone who recently went through it uh on on everything that people think is a good idea for for making that transition from junior to senior and um, it, this is definitely informed by, you know, my experience. I, I, I wrote the Learn in Public essay. Uh, so it's six.io yeah. slash LIP. That's my shortcut for that. Um, and this is the most effective, the most um, impactful piece of writing I've ever done. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think uh, more than 100,000 people uh, have read this and, and they, they keep, they constantly ping me about it. It's got translations in like a few different languages. There's some I haven't put here, um, but like, yeah, so so you know, I, I knew that th I, I had an audience. I had, I had some skill, whatever it is, in in writing this non technical advice. Like even it's 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 hard to like as a dev to to say like, oh, you know, there's nothing that's more valuable than writing this non technical stuff. And and yeah. I think it's true because like that's the stuff that I think I genuinely believe is going to last more than any yeah. framework. Uh, it's it's going to be like the the soft skills, right? Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty funny because like I did a survey of uh career ladders, right? Like, you know, the, the thing that people use to get promoted. And if you study yeah. those things, um, you realize something weird, which is, so I, I studied all the, the public ones. Uh, let's actually mm -hmm. just pick one random one. Uh, let's, let's look at CircleCI, right? Okay. Um, so CircleCI is, is probably, <laughs> probably a bad example because it's one yeah. of the more technical. But these are all publicly uh, available, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And you find the links on my blog. But like, okay, half of it's technical skills, maybe half. The rest is what? Prioritization, dealing with ambiguity, economic thinking. What the hell? I didn't study that in my computer science degree or bootcamp. Uh, feedback, communication, teamwork, decision making, uh, strategic work, business acumen, 
I didn't have any of that. Where is the book that teaches me this stuff, which is, yep. by the way, three quarters of my evaluation for promotion <laughs> um, at, a mo- at CircleCI, which is one of the most technical companies on earth. Uh, yeah. And then technical, technical skills is one quarter. So where's yep. that book? Um, yeah. So yeah, this is that book. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, when I was teaching, uh, one of the things I told students all the time, because I would have, you know, occasionally we'd have students who would maybe not be the best at communicating or <laughs> different things like that. And I was, I would always kind of just try to set aside time to like talk to them and be like, listen, you're brilliant. You know how to code. You're learning that. That's great. But you're going to need these other things if you're actually going to make it as a developer, because if you can't communicate yeah. and you can't work with the team and you can't, you know, just exactly what you're talking about, there are all those other skills that like you don't necessarily think about <laughs> initially when you think I'm going to learn to code are super, yeah. super important and really going to help you, uh, you know, just do better. So, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. mean, Nick, Nick, you read it, so I'm, I'm uh, kind of preaching to the choir, but like, you know, that, that was yeah, kind yeah. of the motivation. <laughs> um. and, and and to be clear, too, it doesn't mean like you clearly need to have technical skills to some degree, because, yes. you know, obviously you need <laughs> to sure. still be able to, but, but it's not the whole thing, like, and, and it seems like most of it really is the non-coding <laughs> part. And it, it, it does sound kind of funny, because like people are always... You know, like, yeah, I'm going to code this, going to code that. There's none of the, like, well, let's look at the big picture. Let's, you know, like, whoa, like, does this provide business value? Like, you know, we, we shouldn't just switch to this, to this for just because you want to. Like, it, there's there's so many, I mean, businesses are complex, but, uh, you know, like, there's so many things to take into account. And, and dealing with people is, like, a huge thing. Like, I mean, uh, in any aspects of life, like, any, any relationships you have with folks, you know, it's like, you know it's it's like a it's a big thing you know it's that's because uh i don't know well like i like you said i've gone through the book already but it's like uh it's it's like huge the soft skill part mm-hmm. yeah it is and, and like it's funny because um to to have the audacity to write something like this is kind of saying that i know anything about this which i don't um <laughs> right yeah. So, yeah. so it takes a certain kind of uh, insanity to to write a book of about soft skills, <laughs> especially because like I have my problems with people too. Uh, I have my demons that I deal with as well. So, um, this is you know definitely regard this as a compendium of what other people say. So, uh, yeah. one of the things one of the things that I also stress on. No, let me. Uh, so this is where I actually uh, house the material. Um, let me head to. The bibliography. Um, so one of the ways in which I dealt with my own imposter syndrome writing this thing was I I collected everything smart that other people had said, right? Because then you don't have to believe me; you can just believe other people. So uh, yeah. it turned out to be uh, 1,500 links of wow. advice from other people that have been curated by me. So I, I provide curation, but uh, you don't have to believe me; you can believe Danny Bramoff or you can believe C- Cindy Stridaran, who's like extremely senior people. Dan Liu, yeah. like extremely senior people, Scott Hanselman, like, um, yeah, you don't have to believe me as a compendium of other people's work, uh, <laughs> or yeah. well, not work, but like their ideas, <laughs> right? And yeah. and I, I interpret and explain it to you, but I also give you the the source links so you could go read up on it on your own. Um, so it's one of those things where like it's definitely not a book meant for you to read in one sitting. Um, it's meant for it's meant as a handbook. It's meant as uh, you know, for the whatever 48 years that you're that you're going through this phase, um, you can revisit it at any point. Uh, you know, I'm still publishing updates, and uh, and I think that's yeah. that's well, that's what I would want to have. I think that's what I want to see exist in the industry. So I'm trying I'm trying to do that. You know. Yeah. No. It's it's one of the things uh, I mentioned it to you in your in the the Discord for the book. But one of the things I love is is that you have all these external links, and it's I I tried. I don't know how others have read the book, but I initially wanted to read it from start to finish. But I, like, I quickly, I quickly, and it's not, I don't mean this as, as a criticism. I, it was just like, yeah, I'm going to read the whole book. Cause I have this bad habit of like buying a course, not finishing the course and stuff. So I'm like, I'm yeah, reading yeah, this yeah. book and you know, you start going off on tangents, but in a good way, it's like, you, you know, you start talking about a particular topic in the book and then you're like, here's, 10 links and then and then I kind of go off to these external links and it 
it's it's almost like it's a living breathing cuz like I know you updated it recently uh the book uh I think like last yeah. week. Well, so it's well, like it's like a living book and the links, you know, so it's I don't it's like a huge resource. Uh that's that's what it I It is a huge resource. It, yeah, it's it's kind of like what I do for my open source stuff like here. Uh you know, like con continually updating, right? The the React Texture yeah. stuff. Uh it's just in book form and I I slap the price on it, but like <laughs> I, you know, I the, the, my time on it is still, 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 uh, still like even if nobody read it, like the the compi compilation of this, of this content is useful for me, right? Like I have brought, yeah. like when I change jobs, uh, or when I had to negotiate a price, I didn't change jobs, but I negotiated something recently. I pulled up my my own notes on negotiating. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then I was like, all right, blah 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 blah. blah. All right, good. Like you know, these are ideas that I can that I can pull up. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, it's a it's a resource for me. Uh, it's a resource for others if they want it. Um, yeah, uh, I also think that like it then it then is helpful to be able to chat with other people about it because uh, I think that there are a lot of developers and like there are a lot of developers who never get never get here, never never watch a live stream of like three people just randomly shooting a shit about you know <laughs> Svelte and whatever. Like they they do their jobs, they go home, end of story, right? They they. they uh, yeah. But I think there are a lot of ambitious developers who kind of find, feel like alone in their company where they can't really have a real honest discussion about stuff like know your worth, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so like having a community is, is also helpful. So I try to provide that. Um, so it started with the, the Discord um, and that's yeah. here. Uh, and then and then I also realized that. So what, what, something that's funny about the Discord is that a lot of people buy access to the Discord and then never log on. Um, <laughs> or they're just like, they're not like they're not like me. Like this is this is someone who's who's really bought into Discord, right? Mm -hmm, um, yeah. But yeah. some people will only have one logo here. You know what I mean? Like, and they they will yeah. only open it once, and then they'll, they'll they won't open Discord, and then they'll never see it again. So you need to find a way to be where people are, uh, and and so that's that's where that's where I came on this idea of like let's have a community. This actually sends weekly updates. So if you look at the notifications. Um, this actually sends updates. Uh, you can you can do like weekly, like for me, because I'm I run the thing, so uh, yeah. I, I get instant updates. But um, you know, it actually sends sends something to people, and they can hop back in at any time. Um, so I think that's a that's an interesting way for me. Like this this for async community, you know, not live. Mm -hmm. And then for people who who want it, want that Discord experience, I also do this. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm kind of I, I use both because. I, I can I find Discord can get overwhelming for me uh, with all yeah. the There's so no threats. but but I yeah. but I still check it out you know but I I'm I'm not on it daily but I because I have I have a few Discords I have like the the Kensi Dodds for like Epic React and yours oh and, yeah and I think I might have one more but uh but yeah I I like the mix of the two because you know I'm I'm in no rush to to read all the things so I can just go whenever I want kind of like even in discord I mean even if there's like 200 messages I can scroll through them or I can just say you know what just nuke it and go to the latest so it's uh but it's uh yeah no there's just tons of info in there um yeah yeah um you know so so I I do think so one thing one piece of feedback that I I definitely do take into account is is that is that idea that uh people have to stop reading to to follow links um, so I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot there. So one thing I'm I'm planning to do for version two is uh, reduce this number. <laughs> I want to okay. have it because I, I think 500 pages is a lot. Um, but also, so you know, where where I have all these links, I want to just say like, um, you know, I'll, I'll 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 actually collect them at the end, and you can follow on, follow them after you're done reading the chapter, right? Oh, so yeah. every every chapter would have at the end um, some level of uh, Next steps and recommended reads, something like that. I'll just do this for every chapter. Um, yeah, so I yeah. think that's that's something I, I'm aiming for 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 next next time. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. It helps kind of with the flow because when you're reading something, and just like uh, Nick was saying, yeah. I, I tend to do that too. If someone does have like a link there, I'll I'll tend to click on it, and then I'm like gone on that link for a while, and then you know a kid comes or something. I'm I'm done reading for now. <laughs> so then it's like yeah. it's hard to kind of get back into that. So I think I think that is a good idea. Yeah. Also, it, like, also, it would be it would make it possible for me to put out a physical version because a lot of people actually ask me about um, they want a print version, and obviously okay. I can't print links, right? So that that was like a, a no for me. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice to have a physical version for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, there's a lot of great stuff in there. Like, there's 
I don't, I don't want to give too much away about the book, but like, uh, oh please, go I, ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, th there's a there's a few things I pulled out just from like I was just going through it uh, yesterday or the day before, but like maybe just touch on a couple things like first principles if people aren't familiar with what that is because uh, it's it's kind of something you, you dig into in the book and I think it's important uh, I mean yeah um, uh, do, you want, do you want me to get into it <laughs> well as much as you want to talk about it like I I, I, I don't yeah. want you reading your whole book over the stream because then people will <laughs> <laughs> no it's fine uh, you know I, I, I like I like this one this I really like, I should have highlighted this more. I don't know. It's, it's, it's called the dumbest thing that smart people do, which is kind of really like the, instead of listening to what everyone else says about a thing and then having forming your opinion about the thing, uh, why not just like look at the, just the thing itself. Right. And, yeah. and try to uh, build it from scratch or like think about the individual underlying components and th then think about uh, whether the, the overall, overall uh, idea makes sense so uh yeah so i talk about this uh in, in relation to big o notation like when you talk when, when you listen to when you, you know when you hear things about algorithms uh, you can also you can you can think about you know you can hear about like oh you know x such and such framework is very fast or such and such framework is very small um and that's a very uh that's that's not first principles that is more of uh uh, induct. Uh, I forget the difference between inductive and deductive. Do you remember? Um, uh, I always, I, always. I don't. <laughs> deductive. I, I can nod. I can nod and say yes, I do. So I look good, but <laughs> it's alright. But yeah, I, I need practice on this too. Like, and, and the more I practice, the more the, the the smarter I sound. So deductive reasoning is you give a base set of general facts and you build up. Whereas inductive is you look at the world that already exists around you and you infer downwards into. Uh, what reality looks like so okay. uh that's what most of us do by default like we we listen to what other people say and that's our opinion of what uh, uh a thing is but if we look at something from the bottom up um, then we actually have the real causal factors behind uh, why a thing is the way it is so uh you know concretely like we we're just talking about reactive versus, versus felt if yeah. we just had discussions about oh react is react is better uh, felt is smaller uh, but you don't really know why. You just know that other people say it is, right? And that's okay, how yeah. the way the way we we interact with a lot of technology a lot of times. Like we're we're just kind of, uh, you know, uh, forwarding, uh, mm, importing our opinions from other people. <laughs> but if we actually looked into the code, like I like I, I got you to look into the code, and got you comfortable with that code, and said like this is you know you look at the before look at the source, look at the compiled output. And then here's the compiler, but here's the here's the location and source that actually runs this extra code. Um, then you understand that there is no other abstraction on top of it, uh, and that's the reason why Svelte is smaller. So to me, that's a first principles way to look at a framework, to look at its core and its open up all the insides and and look at it fundamentally. Like there there are first principles ways to think about React as well. So uh, one of my more popular talks is um, the React hooks talk, right? Um, yeah. I watched you uh, live code this on the egghead. Uh... Right. Uh, oh, that was the concurrent React talk. Um, oh, this okay. Is the, okay. This is the the uh, the uh, this is the basic React talk. So, so I basically live coded a React clone, right, in a hundred and something lines of JavaScript, and showed every single part of it. Right. Showed showed that yeah. showed what the okay. I did model watch is, this one. Yeah. Showed what hooks are, and then you understand it forever and ever, right? You, yeah. you don't have to like go like, what does what does uh, X authority think about hooks? What does Y authority think about hooks? Oh, they disagree. Okay, like, I don't know what to think now. Like, no, yeah. you, you just, you, you know, you have a fundamental model and you have an independent opinion of what these things are. And I think that's a very healthy approach to technology because then you're not swayed by other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I remember what it was now. You you did this talk, but you did it like a test drive of the talk on, you know, when they do those informal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the one with you. Cause, yeah. Yeah, because I remember because I I live coded it, well, by myself in TypeScript while you were doing it. Yeah. Just for fun. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. No, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, that, yeah that was so was amazing when cool. you did that. Yeah. Um, I was even intimidated to do it in TypeScript because I was just like, I don't know if I have all the you know, mutability and so, sometimes you want, you want some polymorphism and TypeScript is very against polymorphism. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh... anyway, anyway, so, so yeah, that's, that's the first principles approach to, 
to to life and i think uh you know it, it's a it's a very it's it's not you can't do it very often because there are not that many first principles rules that you can hold on to but when you can do it then you're just you know for a fact that you're right and there's so many things that are there's so many things that are not certain in this world that uh things yeah. things that are true no matter what are are just va so valuable um so yeah. I, I really i really like those yeah no it's uh, there's like honestly so much great stuff in here and especially with the external links too and the the other thing i mean you you talk about it all the time but like the whole learning in public movement uh, I know because I, I remember when you came out on the scene, I was like, who is this guy? And then <laughs> and then and then you you just kept giving more and more talks. And then uh, the whole learning in public, like, you know, writing things and stuff like I, I was definitely inspired by that. That's that's one of the like I was telling you yesterday or the day before. That's kind of why I started this stream. Uh, I, I had been blogging for a while, too, and stuff. But I just like I don't know. I, I feel like the learning in public is kind of yolo but in the sense it's like structured yolo that's that's how i would kind of call it <laughs> so uh but uh because i do say yolo a lot but uh, i it's it's one of the things like uh, i really enjoy about all the stuff you talk about a lot because like you're getting your knowledge out there people correct you or they they assist you like I, i've seen you do this multiple times on on twitter you say something and then i, I forget you had a recent tweet and then somebody yeah. goes well, Damn. no, it's this. And then you're like, and then you're like, oh, that's great. Can you provide a, a link or a resource? Or do you have a post about that? You know, like you basically kind of like you didn't I, I, and you didn't do it in a in a mean way. That's not what I mean. It, it was more like just like, no. oh, that's interesting. Can you can you share that point of view from some resources or do you have something? You know, it was just kind of a nice way to kind of say like, you know, uh, a civil debate, I guess, uh, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. Um I definitely, I definitely think uh, that that is uh, quite lacking from a lot of online conversation. Um, yeah, you, you you go online to learn, not to yell at other people. Uh, at least I I don't. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, even even someone some people who are mean to you, uh, they, they like your biggest critics can become your biggest teachers if you just listen to them sometimes. And then yeah. if they see that you're listening, then they can often change their attitude quite a bit. Um, yeah. And and I think if you don't attach ego to your work, you're just like you know I'm putting out what I think is true. I've done the work, okay? Don't definitely yeah. do the work. Don't don't be like an overnight expert. Like actually do the work. But you you put you put out what you think the, the best version of what you think is true. And even if someone points out a flaw, then they're just fixing a, a hole that you had. Um, and yeah. then you know the the result is that the the version of you today is better than the version of you yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's all we can ask for, uh, not to compare with other people, just to compare with ourselves. Um, yeah. So yeah. I definitely ap 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 approach that in that way. And I think people like that. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, yeah. go ahead, Nick. No, no, go ahead, Christina. Yeah, yeah I think um, it's really important. I, I, I know I've followed kind of your like learning in public model too. It's something I've done I from know. the beginning. As you know I've how I know? And <laughs> <laughs> you know how I know? <laughs> Did you listen Let's to see. something? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I listened to this one. I was like, hmm. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I recommend people check this out as well because uh, we have well, Christina's take on it. Um, but yeah, you know, I think uh, I think it's super helpful for especially for uh, people just getting into tech for the first time. They uh, yeah. we we often have, like you and I we we both career changed, you know. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, we have this imposter syndrome. Like, I don't have a CS degree. Like, what do I know? And yeah. uh, so sometimes I think it's it's just is good to have visible people like you and me uh, who, who just say that it's okay to do it, um, okay, yeah. it you know, and, and, and show that it works and show that it's actually better than trying to keep it to yourself and, and like, and never improving. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's, I liked what you said, kind of the, I think I quickly learned, here's the thing, coming from a side of being a parent, my kids like to point out all the time when I'm wrong. And so it was interesting <laughs> getting into tech that I could like, I, I took that, you know, my kids pointing out, they can show you the best and the worst of you, I think kids can. And I think the, tru it, the truth is that when you put stuff out there, people can too. And so I quickly had to learn, just like when I learned with my kids, like you just got to step back and you just have to kind of take that criticism and take those things that you're learning um, and 
And sometimes you do have to kind of protect yourself and just walk away for a minute, you know, but take yep. those things and think about them, right? And then change it if you need to. And that was something I had to learn when I was teaching. Like, uh, you know, I, I was live coding every day for two hours. There were things I did wrong all the time. <laughs> like I had to, yeah, yeah. you know, get that information from my students and and just take that and learn from it. And I think it's important. It's hard, but I think it's really important for people to realize that, yeah, there will be people out there who are, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a woman in tech, so I it puts stuff out there. I'll get things sometimes too. And, you know, I'm not even, you know, a minority or something. So there's, there's, there's different levels, I think too, that it can be really hard to kind of put yourself out there. But when you do a lot of times, what you'll find is that people are really helpful. And even those people yeah. who are saying those things that are not great, that they, they really are trying in a way they can help you, whether they're trying to or not, they can help you. And you can always flip it so that it does help you and you can be better. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Um, and then one one of the other things, like if you get good at this, right? If you get a good, if you get a reputation of like you're teachable, you know, you're uh, mm -hmm. you you phrase things really well, and you you help to communicate to beginners, then it actually is very useful for uh, people who are more advanced than you to kind of use you as a foil. They'll they'll do things like they'll test uh, their phrasing against you and then see what you think, or uh, you know they'll they'll they'll, they'll take your questions more seriously because you amplify them. Because yeah. because the the things that you learn, you turn around and you teach other people. So the time that people spent on you multiplies by your effort. So uh, I think it's it's a very powerful brand to develop uh, because that means that people will just hire you to learn things, and that's what I'm doing at AWS. Like I yeah. I, so I had no business being at AWS, but uh, because like I was like I, I I can I can bring people along, and um, I think that uh, you know I. I I can I can I can teach people like like I was. Um, yeah. I think that's that's a valuable thing. And uh, uh, yeah, so be paid to learn in public is a, is a great position. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. No, it's yeah. No, I I've I've just been really enjoying all the stuff you put out. You know, it's and it, you're just doing yeah, a, appreciate that, man. just great work out there. You know, uh, and and you've been a you've been at AWS for. I forget when you left Netlify, but you've been there for a while now, or uh, four months. Not yeah, not that long. too long yet. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So they they're they're kind enough to let me uh, keep going with side hustle stuff. Um, oh, and, that's cool. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's actually a really good good job and a great company. Um, it, it's just a, a lot to learn. Um, I still feel like, yep. you know, the other day I was just kind of reflecting, like, you know, you know how that uh, the console okay I, I have some secret stuff i cannot show you but uh, <laughs> um but just like the the console uh, uh -huh. <laughs> and, like i i had my first experience yesterday of like i'm not scared of this anymore um oh shit. okay yeah okay well this is okay fun fact this is how employees log on to amazon uh there's like a secret uh thing <laughs> i can show you a hardware key too or yeah there's hardware key i just clicked it okay, okay. um yep. uh it's it's like this little blue thing uh, that you just press it. It's it's kind of like one of those like um, web auth end tokens type of things uh, that are okay. they're kind of in vogue. They they give these out at conferences for some reason. Apparently, it's like a future the future of logins on on um, on AWS. Uh, sorry, on on the web. Anyway, but like I was I was I was having to go through and configure um, you know IAM roles, and I realized yeah. that like I'm no longer scared of this. Like this this used to be super scary to me. And now I can just kind of go through and I'm just like, all right, yeah, this is the one I want. Like, you know, I just like it, it's you throw yourself at it for a while and then you just get familiar with it. And then and then you're no longer scared of it. And I think that's a this is such a powerful feeling. But I mean, I'm definitely not there yet with a lot of other AWS services. Um, <laughs> I don't think anyone it, is. <laughs> that's something I've learned <laughs> with I AWS. I, uh, I was uh, working uh, with. With someone before I started at Dev, I was working with Exampro, and I was uh, I was taking oh yeah their, Andrew Brown yeah I was taking yeah, their yeah. information and I was creating like notes for him from his like courses and some of my more popular blog posts are like how to create an AWS account or all the clouds in AWS <laughs> because people there's just so much <laughs> it's like people yeah, just yeah, don't yeah. even like know that information and it's, I didn't either like I was learning it at the time and so it's like it's like a lot uh, AWS is very powerful yeah, there's just there's there's a lot to learn there yeah. yeah i mean you know you could look at it as what if these are individual startups you know and then you'd have to yeah. cobble these together anyway right they, they just happen yeah. to share the same banner um which also means they share the same billing and, and all that and security and all that so 
that, I mean, that's nice. Uh, but the, yeah, you know, like there's some of these there that have. So you know, the 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 the, the part of AWS I work at is Netlify, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's basically AWS Netlify, right? Um, yeah. yeah. There's there's never been any uh, secret about that, but. Uh, then, then you also get to use the other stuff uh, natively, and and that's that's a plus to me. Um, and so th that's really cool. Like uh, there's S3, uh, the comparable might might be like Backblaze, uh, DynamoDB, the comparable might be uh, FaunaDB. You know, mm -hmm. uh, th there there are startup versions of all of these, um, and it's just like whether you want to use the the AWS service or not. There there's some trade offs cost wise, uh, complexity wise, but uh, yeah, I mean you know the the complexity comes from like trying to solve customer problems. So Anyway, I don't want, I don't want to turn this into like an AWS pitch, but like oh, all, yeah, all no I'm worries. saying is, I recently got comfortable with AWS, and I feel like that's an achievement. <laughs> so it is an achievement. I applaud you. <laughs> I, I, I can tell I can tell you a little dirty secret. I've never logged into an Amazon console ever. I've I, I've never even used I've never <laughs> even used S3. I've used these things indirectly through other services like Netlify yeah, or, yeah. but uh, mm -hmm. I I have you use, never it's, been. It's in just it's just Heroku with with Dev. Uh yeah, devs on Heroku right now. We got Postgres running there, and uh, yeah, we got we've got the uh, the nodes there on Heroku. But with the <clears throat> with the cloud stuff going on, uh, we have uh, I think we're hosting on AWS in some cases, and uh, I'm not sure if mm -hmm. the plan is to move it all to AWS as we, as we go with the the cloud platform. But because uh, I haven't really been involved in any of that, I've, I've focused more on the front end right now yeah but uh but yeah i i think it's aws where everything's going to yeah. but uh but yeah yeah cool i oh, mean cool, look cool. like yeah uh world's a big place <laughs> <laughs> cool cool well listen uh we're we're around in about an hour and a half this is usually about the yeah. time we wind things down because uh i think people at some point have to go to the bathroom or, or whatever or they 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 start to lose a bit of uh juice watching a stream for an hour and a half so um uh all i wanted to say was uh i had an amazing time speaking with you this was like super awesome and uh just thanks for sharing everything about svelte and about your book um i think christina has posted your links in the chat so mm -hmm. if people want to give you a follow yep. or they've got questions about svelte or pretty much anything i guess you know and i, I just realized i've got a, Life, a blood the go universe. the blood goatee <laughs> oh no <laughs> I, I shaved i shaved like two hours ago and it's still bleeding i guess uh, anyways that's that's a live stream for you um yeah. but yeah when's my so anyways um, do i do i get a dev shirt <laughs> I, I want to send you one. I, we we haven't done anything like that, but I th I think it's deserved. So I, I I'll have to I'll have to speak to the powers that be. But we'll, we'll uh, I'm gonna be shameless and ask for a dev shirt because we'll, that, that's yeah. so cool. Just worst worst dev. case, I'll send you one. So yeah, but, uh, it's really no. cool. I I've, I actually have three of these. I, oh, I, bought, I just got mine sent to me. My mom's bringing them when she comes. <laughs> Uh, it's because I bought one before I was working at Dev, and then I got another one. And mm -hmm. then when you start at Dev, they you are well form now, but they they give you a Dev shirt. So I ended up with three, but uh, oh, they're awesome. comfy. So we're we're gonna get you one. Don't worry. Yay! Um, <laughs> cool, cool. All right. Well, cool. thanks again, and Thank uh, I hope you sleep at some point today. <laughs> yes. It's my it's my routine. I I just you know. Uh, the, the, there's uh, the upstairs neighbor started doing construction at 9 a.m. Um, and that's oh, no. when I sleep. So <laughs> oh, okay. this week has been rough, but uh, normally it's fine. Yep. yep. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. All right. Well, thanks again. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. Bye, Take everybody. Care, everybody.